Life is pleasant. Death is peaceful. It's the transition that's troublesome. Isaac Asimov. Now, it might not be a suitable topic for polite dinner conversation, but dying is a part of life. Yet, despite the universal nature of this experience, we don't actually know a lot about what it's like to die. So, I've turned to 2,000-year-old mummies to try to figure it out. My name is Katie East, and I'm a PhD student in the anthropology department here at McMaster University. I study 2,000-year-old mummies from the Roman period in Egypt, and I study modern people from Florida to figure out what it's like to die, and if everyone experiences this the same way. Of course, this isn't easy. We can't just ask people who have been through it, for obvious reasons, and archaeological remains don't often tell us how an individual felt about something. So, I analyzed stress hormones, specifically cortisol. And cortisol is released in response to physical and psychological stress. And I extract this stress hormone from human hair, which records monthly averages of stress hormone exposure. For this study, I looked at the last three months of an individual's life to capture the experience of dying. So far, what I found is that people who are dying have higher stress hormone levels than people who are not. Maybe that's not surprising. But what is interesting is that people who are dying today have far higher stress hormone levels than people who died in the past, more than 10 times higher in some cases. Now, we don't yet know why this might be. It could be because of different expectations of the afterlife, or it could be a result of the more prolonged nature of dying today, or it could be even due to the medications prescribed to manage symptoms around death and dying in modern society. But whatever the case may be, we do know that it's not because people are just more stressed in general today, because other studies on modern living populations haven't found stress hormone levels this high. So together, these results suggest that dying is stressful. But they also suggest that it might not have to be as stressful as it is today. So with this in mind, I want to take what I've learned from these 2,000-year-old mummies, and I want to apply hair cortisol analysis to the evaluation and research of end-of-life care and palliative care strategies to improve the experience of dying. So that one day, when you or your loved one or I have to face the prospect of dying, we can say that life is pleasant and death is peaceful and the transition just isn't so bad. Thank you.